It was a quiet afternoon, the kind that usually fills our cozy suburban home with a sense of calm and contentment. Lillian was napping in her crib, her tiny chest rising and falling in a rhythm that always brought a smile to my face. I decided to take advantage of this rare moment of tranquility to organize Lillian's room. As I was sorting through a pile of her clothes, my eyes caught a glimpse of an old, dusty box tucked away in the corner of the closet. Curiosity peaked. I pulled it out. It was labeled, Mike's Keepsakes. I thought it would be a sweet gesture to organize it for him, maybe even find some old photos of us to frame. I opened the box, and there they were. Pictures of Mike in his younger days, letters, and various mementos. But then, my hands froze on a bundle of letters tied with a faded ribbon. The top one was addressed to Mike, and as I unfolded it, my heart sank. It was from his ex-girlfriend, Lillian, the same name as our daughter. I couldn't believe it. It had to be a coincidence. But as I read through the letters, the truth became undeniable. He had named our daughter after her. I felt a wave of emotions crashing over me. Betrayal, confusion, hurt. It was as if the ground beneath me had shifted. Hearing Mike's car pull into the driveway, I quickly put everything back, my mind racing. When he walked in, I could barely look at him. Hey, love, how was your day? Mike asked, leaning in for a kiss. But I pulled away, holding the bundle of letters up. What is this, Mike? My voice was trembling, but I needed answers. He looked at the letters, then at me, his face paling. Jane, I can explain. Explain? Explain how our daughter's name, the name I thought we chose together, is actually your ex's? How could you, Mike? He sighed, running a hand through his hair. I know how it looks, but it's not what you think. I've always liked the name Lillian. It's just a coincidence that... A coincidence? I interrupted, feeling a mix of anger and disbelief. You expect me to believe that? It's the truth, Jane. I didn't mean to hurt you. I never thought it would be a big deal. Not a big deal? You named our daughter after another woman you loved, and it's not a big deal? I couldn't keep the bitterness out of my voice. I didn't mean it that way. I just... I messed up, okay? I should have told you, but I didn't think it would matter. It matters to me, Mike. It matters because it feels like our entire life is built on a lie. I'm sorry, Jane, I really am. Can we just forget this and move on? Forget it? No, I can't just forget it. This is our daughter we're talking about. Her name, her identity. How am I supposed to trust you now? He reached out to me, but I stepped back. I need some time to think. Jane, please. No, Mike. I need space. I need to figure out what this means for us. For Lillian. I can't just sweep this under the rug. He looked at me, his eyes filled with regret, but I couldn't bring myself to forgive him that easily. This wasn't just about a name. It was about trust. About our life together. And right now, I felt like I didn't know the man I married at all. I remember sitting across from Sarah in the quaint little coffee shop downtown, my hands wrapped around a steaming mug of coffee. It had been a week since the discovery, and the hurt hadn't dulled. I poured out my heart to Sarah, who listened with a sympathetic ear. You know, Jane, maybe you should consider getting more information, just to be sure, Sarah suggested gently, stirring her latte. And how am I supposed to do that? It's not like Mike is going to tell me anything more. What about hiring a private investigator? They could dig into Mike's past, maybe find out more about his relationship with his ex. I hesitated, the idea feeling like a drastic step, yet a part of me yearned for the whole truth. Do you think that's a good idea? It might give you peace of mind. At least you'll know where you stand. Convinced, I found a reputable private investigator and explained my situation. He was a middle-aged man, with a keen eye and a reassuring demeanor. So, you want to know if your husband had any recent contact with his ex-girlfriend, and anything about their past that might be relevant? The PI confirmed, taking notes. Yes, exactly. I need to know if there's more to this story. He nodded, understandingly. I'll see what I can find out. A few days later, we met at a quiet park. The PI handed me a folder. I've got some information for you, Jane. It's quite revealing. My heart pounded as I opened the folder. There were phone records, showing calls between Mike and Lillian up until a few months ago. There were also emails, where Mike had mentioned to Lillian that he was going to name his first daughter after her. It looks like Mike kept in contact with Lillian for quite some time, and he did indeed promise to name his daughter after her, the P.I. explained. I felt a mix of emotions, 
Vindication, anger, sadness. The proof was right there in black and white. Mike had lied to me, and the extent of his betrayal was deeper than I had imagined. Thank you, I said to the P.I., my voice barely above a whisper. This is exactly what I needed to know. Back at home, I confronted Mike again. I know you've been in contact with Lillian, and you promised her you'd name our daughter after her. I have proof, Mike. He looked stunned, a flush of guilt spreading across his face. Jane, I... I can explain. There's nothing to explain. How could you lie to me like this? How could you be so deceitful? Jane, I'm sorry, I never meant to hurt you. It was just... Just what, Mike? A game? A trip down memory lane? What about our daughter? What about our family? He reached out to me, but I stepped back, feeling a barrier had been erected between us. I need time, Mike. Time to think about what this means for us, for Lillian. I can't just pretend everything is fine. Jane, please. Let's talk about this. We can work through it. No, Mike. There's no we in this. You made your choice when you decided to deceive me, to bring your past into our present. I need to figure out what I'm going to do, and I can't do that with you here. Leaving Mike standing there, lost and regretful, I walked away, my mind racing with the gravity of the situation. The trust we had built over the years was shattered. The path forward was unclear, but one thing was certain. There was no room for reconciliation. The truth had set me free, but it also left a deep wound in its wake. The air in our home, once filled with love and laughter, was now heavy with tension and unspoken words. Mike had returned from work, and I could tell he was treading lightly, probably unsure of how to approach me after our last confrontation. I sat in the living room, the folder of evidence on the coffee table in front of me, a clear statement of my intent to confront this head-on. I see you've been doing some digging, Mike said softly, his eyes on the folder. Yes, I have. And I've found more than enough, I replied, my voice steady despite the storm of emotions inside me. Jane, I'm so sorry. I never wanted to hurt you or Lillian. It was a mistake. A stupid mistake. A mistake? Mike, you named our daughter after your ex-girlfriend. You've been in contact with her. This isn't just a mistake. It's a betrayal. I know. And I regret it every day. Can we please find a way to move past this? I shook my head, the decision clear in my mind. I don't think we can. There's too much broken here, Mike. Tears welled up in his eyes. But I couldn't let that sway me. The next day, I made an appointment with a lawyer to discuss my options. The lawyer's office was a stark contrast to the chaos of my emotions. Calm, orderly, and rational. Mrs. Jane, what brings you in today? The lawyer asked, his voice calm and professional. I need to discuss a few things, about a potential separation from my husband, and I also want to change my daughter's name. The lawyer nodded, jotting down notes. I understand. Let's start with the name change. That is relatively straightforward. As for the separation, are you considering a divorce? I'm not sure yet. I need to think about it. But I need to know what my options are. Of course. We'll go over everything. Custody, financial arrangements, the process of separation. I want you to know that you have rights and options. Thank you. I just want what's best for Lillian and me. I understand. You're making a brave decision, and I'm here to help you through this process. Leaving the lawyer's office, I felt a sense of empowerment, despite the pain and uncertainty. This was about taking control of my life, about protecting Lillian and ensuring our future. That evening, I sat down with Mike. The conversation was going to be one of the hardest I'd ever had, but it was necessary. Mike, I've been to see a lawyer today. He looked up, his face a mix of fear and sadness. A lawyer? Jane, are we? I'm not sure yet. But I need to do what's best for me and Lillian. I'm changing her name, and I'm considering our options for the future. Jane, please. Isn't there any way we can work this out, for Lillian's sake? It's for Lillian's sake that I'm doing this. She deserves a life free of deceit. And I deserve a partner who respects me and our family. The conversation continued, a mix of pleas and tears from Mike. But my mind was made up. The trust that had been the foundation of our relationship was gone and I needed to rebuild my life, for me and for Lillian. As I lay in bed that night, the house eerily silent, I thought of Lillian sleeping peacefully in her room. This journey wasn't just about me. It was about her, too. 
about giving her a life filled with honesty, respect, and love. The road ahead was uncertain, but I knew one thing for sure. I was ready to face it, head on. Standing outside the courthouse, the crisp autumn air felt refreshing, invigorating. It was done. Lillian's name was legally changed to Ella, a name we chose together, just her and me. It felt like a new beginning, a fresh start for both of us. Ella was too young to understand all that had happened, but she giggled and clapped her hands, her joy infectious. As we walked away, I couldn't help but reflect on the past months. They had been hard, filled with tough decisions and emotional turmoil. But here I was, standing stronger than ever. Ella and I had moved to a new home, a charming little house with a garden that she loved to play in. It was at a neighborhood barbecue that I met David, a single dad with a kind smile and an easygoing nature. Our friendship had blossomed over shared parenting stories and mutual interests. He had become a confidant, a source of support, and recently, something more. Jane, this place looks great. You've done an amazing job with the house, David remarked, admiring the cozy living room filled with laughter and chatter from our new friends. Thanks, David. It feels good to start anew, to create a space that's just ours, I replied, smiling at him. And Ella seems to be loving it here. She's made so many friends already. She has. I'm so proud of her. She's been so brave through all of this. Watching Ella play with her new friends in the garden, I felt a sense of peace. I had worried about how the changes would affect her, but she had adapted with a resilience that amazed me. Later that evening, as Ella slept soundly, David and I sat on the porch, a gentle breeze stirring the leaves. You know, Jane, watching you these past few months, I've seen how strong you are. You've handled everything with such grace and courage. I looked at David, his sincere eyes reflecting the soft porch light. It wasn't easy, but it was necessary. For me, for Ella, I had to find my way back to who I am, to what I believe in. And you've done more than just that. You've built a new life, a better one. It feels that way, and having you here, it's made a huge difference. Jane, I care about you, more than just as a friend. I've wanted to tell you for a while now. His words sent a warm flutter through my heart. I feel the same, David. I wasn't sure if I was ready to open my heart again. But with you, it just feels right. We sat there for a while, talking about the future, about possibilities. It was a future that once seemed so bleak, but now held promise and hope. The next morning, as I made breakfast, I looked around at the life I had rebuilt. The walls of our new home were filled with pictures of Ella and me, of our friends, of new memories. There was a sense of accomplishment, of pride. Mommy, can we go to the park today? Ella asked, her eyes bright with excitement. Of course, sweetheart, we can do anything you want. As I watched her eat her breakfast, her laughter filling the room, I realized that this journey wasn't just about overcoming the pain or the betrayal. It was about rediscovering myself, about creating a life full of love and honesty for Ella and me. And as I looked forward, I knew that whatever the future held, we would face it together, with strength, courage, and hope. And that brings us to the end of our story. Now here's a question for you. If you were in Jane's shoes, would you have taken the same steps to change your daughter's name and move on from the relationship, or would you have chosen a different path? Why or why not? Your thoughts and experiences matter, and we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the story, and subscribe to our channel for more captivating tales. Your support helps us continue to bring these stories to life. Share your perspective, join our community, and let's keep the conversation going.